You guys know that feeling you get after playing a game with a super deep meaning and it hits you in the gut with some eye-opening emotional moment or a moral epiphany? That feeling is not at all what you get when you play this game. How fish is made, at least not right away. This is a student project made by just a couple of guys and it's about... Well, I, I'm not quite sure what it's about entirely. You're a fish, and you're stuck in this mechanical, fleshy machine that swallowed you, and you have to make one big decision before you reach the end of the game that ends up deciding your fate, up or down. I find games with these bizarre premises to always be the most eye-catching, and compared to the rest of the games in my library, I end up dwelling on these the most and thinking about what their true meaning is for days and days after I play them. Some of my favorite examples of these are the Stanley Parable and Night in the Woods, but How Fish is Made is more compact. You can finish the game in less than 5 minutes if you really try, but you could also slow your pace and savor the game. You could really try to read through every conversation thoroughly, and if you choose to do so, I promise you that your experience will be much more rewarding. So I know a minute ago I said I'm not sure what this game is about, and truly I don't. There's a lot of strange narrative elements placed throughout your journey that all seem unrelated or scattered. I would say this is the kind of game where there's no exact right way to interpret the story, but there are a multitude of ways to interpret it in a meaningful and impactful way that reflects on our daily lives. Whether that's intentional or not from the developers, we may never know. But what we do know is that they've created this surreal piece of art before us, and it's meant to be played. So let's do exactly that. Right off the bat, we're hit with this reality that whatever place you've gotten yourself into, there's only two ways out, up or down. For my first playthrough, I stuck with the down option. This immediately sets everything else up that we experience from this point onward. We don't know the consequences of the decision that we just made. What does down even mean? The oiliest of us have to choose, so don't flatter yourself with your decision. So this is a decision that every fish has to make when they drop here and we get to meet some of these fish pretty quickly after our first interaction. This little guy is super confident about his choice to go up. He's so confident that he wants to make sure that we agree with him. Hmm, interesting. On the other side of the room is his downward counterpart, who claims that down is the correct way. He understands this intuitively because he has a massive IQ and he can't explain how complex it is, so we just have to trust him. A minute ago, the dilemma of up or down was established. Now the game establishes there's a strong polarity between these two options, and these two fish are obviously very confident in their assertions to the point of blocking out others' opinions. If you move on, you eventually see some contrast to this confidence with this poor guy, who's actually very unsure of his answer. His friend is going down, but his family's going up, and he doesn't know which way to go, so he asks for your advice. In my down playthrough, I told him to go down with his friend, to which he responds that he's stupid and that he could never make decisions for himself, always letting his friend tell him what to do. But in my up playthrough, I told him to go with his family, to which he calls his friend stupid and he says that family's always right. A key thing to remember about this conversation is that afterwards, he clarifies which direction you're going, and if you go the same way as him, he brushes it off and pretends that he didn't ask you. But if you go the opposite direction of him, it seems to undo all of the reassurance that you just gave him, and he squirms away. In a matter of minutes, we went from two fish who were profoundly confident in their respective choices to go up and down, to one fish with zero confidence who's clearly swayed by the opinions of others. After this, your next encounter is with a fish who isn't so much opinionated about the decision to go up or down as he is simply trying to unpack and understand what's going on. He debates with himself about the meaning of being stuck in the stomach of whatever creature swallowed us. To contrast with this, the next fish that you meet is not trying to understand the problem but escape it, and he's gotten stuck in the gears of a door and he's begging for help. He specifically instructs the player to not press the big red button or else he may get squished. And guess what you have to do in order to progress to the next room? Yeah. What's interesting is that up to this point we've seen two pairs of contrasting themes. The first pair was confidence in decision making versus uncertainty, and the second pair was the concept of understanding the problem versus trying to escape the problem. Whether it was intentional or not, the developers have given the player examples of all possible ways this situation could be approached, and it leaves the player to decide for themselves how they feel about it. Throughout all of these interactions, you get to choose whether or not you tell each fish you want to go up or down. 
So you can lie or tell the truth to each fish and it's up to you. And your answer may change throughout the game depending on if any opinions have swayed you. After the game forces the player to commit fish murder, the game transitions the narrative. What marks this turning point is when you meet this parasitic isopod inhabiting a fish's tongue. He wants to encourage you with a musical number that can really only be described as strange. If I'm being completely honest, in my opinion this is the hardest part of the game to try and interpret. What follows is a sequence of bizarre visuals visuals blended with choppy dance animations, lyrics that seem awkwardly paced and have no true meaning, and the same audio sample that's used in that one song by everyone's favorite Canadian rapper, Uncle Adams. And while it's hard to interpret, you can take away that the whole theme of this song is fatalism. Fatalism is defined as a doctrine that events are fixed in advance so that human beings, or fish in this case, are powerless to change them. Our performer reminds us that we, the player, will be buried with it with it seemingly referring to the decision that we make or the plan we follow. So no matter whether we go up or down, we have to stick to our guns and live with the choice that we make. We have to be aligned with ambition in our decisions so that we don't waver to external influence. An encouraging little moment, but now your time's up. You have to decide now. This ominous little guy explains to us the importance of everything we just went through. The privilege of choice is the gift, not the outcome of the choice. Did the uncertainty scare you? Or does it scare you more to know that there is no choice for you at all? Then all of this would have been for nothing. But wouldn't it feel better? Don't flatter yourself. I'll tell you a secret. You've already made your choice. This is not about making a decision. This is a test of conviction. Have you strayed from your path? Have you been honest and true to your truth, even to others? I love this dialogue so much. This brief exchange is the key to understanding the events before and after this point in the story. Remember how confident the first two fish were in the game? And remember how scared and uncertain the third guy was? Which of these three fish were more inspirational? Was it the one who was merely going with the flow and couldn't decide for himself? Or was it one of the confidently outspoken fish who, despite being under the same circumstances, somehow made a straight path for themselves and stuck to it? They're clearly more inspiring. Why? Because they have conviction and it shows. They're principled in the face of uncertainty even when it seems that their choice isn't going to matter in the context of this fatalist story. After all, the mere ability to choose is the privilege, not the outcome of the choice. This game speaks to a lot of things, but I think it speaks loudly to free agency and to those who don't take advantage of it under life circumstances. This game also displays how decisions aren't intrinsically difficult, but instead they're extrinsically difficult. And what I mean by that is that the dilemma you're presented with at the beginning of the game is not by nature an inherently difficult question. Up or down is an easy question to answer. What makes the question and complicated is the influence from every other character throughout the game. Hearing the other's opinions, their dialogue, their judgment, and it all puts pressure on you to make the right decision. Whereas without them, the question would have been quite simple. Just look at how scared the fish earlier in the game reacted when you tell him you're going the opposite direction as him. He freaks out. Imagine if you were stuck in his situation. You don't know if it's life or death and the closest people around you are divided and you have to pick a side eventually. You can't just sit there wallowing in your indecisiveness. If he was a principled person, or fish, he would have chosen and stuck to an answer before anybody else told him otherwise. And I think that's why the fish at the end tells us that we've already subconsciously made our choice. So, the game is about conviction then, right? Well, that's a good question. Because after finishing your conversation with this fish, you move forward and you finally get to choose, up or down. This big fish goes ahead of you and tries to yell out what he sees to help you make the right choice, but there's just silence. It's time to go down. You know, I always hated hearing, don't worry, a lot of people are going through the same thing. You're not alone. There's this selfish barbed wire inside of my chest that coils up at that. No, my pain is more tragic, grander, deeper. If only you knew. That's not true, of course. I hate talking about it. Because I hate people who talk about it. And that's not very nice. That's not okay. That's not how you can be about all of this. It's not romantic, but at least it's true. Don't worry. A lot of people are going through the same thing. And that's what makes it the best USP yet. USP being a unique selling point, I assume. Following this text, if you chose down in your playthrough, you get what I like to call the culinary ending, 
where you come out of the processing plant and you go straight to somebody's plate to get eaten. That's pretty awesome. If you chose up instead, you get the uh, fleshy ending. I guess you merge with some eldritch mound of flesh and organs and you live as a part of it forever. Okay, okay, okay. We're getting a little bit off track here. So the text in the two endings, yes, they could be unpacked and they could be examined within their own scope to try and understand what the heck is going on here. But I like to look at this game in the big picture, mainly because if I don't, then it gets too confusing for me. So like I asked earlier, is the game about conviction? It certainly could be. I said at the start of the video that this game doesn't make itself known right away, but if you look at all the pieces together, conviction seems to be the dominating theme for at least three quarters of the story. It's the way that I interpret the story, and the place that I find the most meaning in the game, and hopefully I've helped you see that part of it too, because I do believe strongly in convictions and sticking to them. And while sticking to your guns is good in most cases, we must also be wary to not turn out like the two loudmouths at the start of the game preaching that their way is right without conversing with others. There's a healthy balance between the two extreme examples given in How Fish is Made that you should strive for, and that's why I love this game. If you want to play it, I've linked it in the description below. Thank you for making it this far in the video, and thank you very much for watching. I'll see you all again very soon. Goodbye.